The NASA Europa Clipper mission is a solar system mission that will be performing dozens, uh, nearly 50 flyby approaches to one of the uh, Galilean satellites of Jupiter named Europa. Europa has the strongest evidence to sort of contain the liquid subsurface ocean. It has a lot of scientific potential. It may be turn out to be also sort of supporting environment for habitability. And that's why it's really important for humanity to go there and sort of do the investigation of like what's going on with this moon of Jupiter. Hi, my name is Ritu Parikh. I'm currently a second year postdoc at NASA JPL. Uh, I'm working on with the Clipper science team and my role is like try to understand what's going on on the surface of Europa. Europa was first discovered uh, sometime in January of 1610 uh, from an astronomer called Galileo Galilei. So he made this kind of uh, sort of a handmade telescope and he sort of pointed that telescope to look at the sky and you know what's going on because he was just curious and at that time uh, he was the one who spotted uh, Jupiter's moon Europa. And surprisingly he did not only discover Europa but there is also other Jupiter moons like uh, Callisto, Ganymede, and Io. So that was kind of a very surprising discovery. Uh, years went by and then somewhere in the uh, early 90s, we had uh, two incredible missions called Voyager and Galileo. Two, one. So both of, them, uh, both of these two missions, they did like a little maneuver around many moons, including Europa. And that's where we got really good picture of the surface of Europa for the first time. And it was incredible. The whole scientific community, they were so intrigued and just wanted to figure out like what's going on on the surface of Europa, especially when they saw this kind of, you know, tectonic features and other uh, readings which sort of did support the theory that there is a possibility of a liquid subsurface ocean beneath the thick ice shell. in future for the presence of the life, probably Europa, Europa could be a place if we find those life-supporting ingredients over there. And that's what uh, the Clipper is sort of planning to do once it reaches in 2030. So for the development of the life, we need these four key ingredients. One is the liquid water ocean. On Europa, we believe that it is present underneath the thick ice shell, which is not really on the surface, but actually underneath the surface. Uh, the second is organics. Uh, we believe that this particular subsurface ocean is present on Europa, may have this right chemical uh, composition, which is sort of supporting uh, life, any sort of life. The third is energy. For any life to develop, of course, the energy is required for us, for example, sunlight. Uh, maybe it's possible that there is some sort of interaction energy happening within the ocean, which kind of supports the, the different sort of life that we don't know of as of now. And the fourth is sustainability. Uh, as of now, it's believed that Europa is sort of stable. Uh, so basically no processes going on for almost like four million years. So that's kind of provide a, a perfect example of sustainability and the development for any life. My name is Juan Pablo León and I'm a system engineer at NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory. The NASA Europa Clipper mission is a solar system mission and that will be performing dozens, uh, nearly 50 flyby approaches to one of the uh, Galilean satellites of Jupiter named Europa. And uh, throughout this journey, and uh, the Europa Clipper mission will be obtaining detailed measurements in order to investigate and determine the suitability of uh, this particular icy moon being able to sustain and host life. So the mission really sort of started formulating somewhere around like 2010. Basically, JPL and uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory with NASA and APL, which is in Maryland, which is Applied Physics Laboratory in Maryland. They have sort of formulated the team. Everyone came together and started building the instrument. After that, Phase B happened, where the preliminary design of the mission system and subsystem were completed. And after that, we moved to phase C, where we completed the final design of the spacecraft, the system and subsystems. At this point, fabrication and testing started. Ending of phase C, beginning of phase D is where the pandemic hit.
we faced one of the biggest challenges, right? We were trying to bring steel hardware from other institutions across the US, in Europe, right? And that just became quite the big trouble. So with persistence, once again, with a lot of sacrifice and commitment and ensuring that we are being conscious on the situation that not only us, but our peers, friends, co-workers are being put on, we were able to adapt, persevere, and push through in order to build those system test beds that we currently have in order to test our system as well. Then later we did transition to phase B, which is where we are actually putting everything together. All the flight hardware that we are actually gonna be sending outside of our planet is being put together, integrated really carefully and making sure that we are not making any mistakes because we need to protect this spacecraft as if it's a, a newborn. Now that we are here, uh, the next step is to uh, continue some system level testing. We're planning on shipping the spacecraft to Kennedy Space Center during the spring. It's going to be put on top of the SpaceX uh, Falcon Heavy rocket. Go to the launch pad and count down. <laughs> the journey towards, towards the Jupiter is going to be long journey, what we call it as a cruise period. For Europa Clipper, this cruise period will be of seven years. Uh, after the seven years, we are planning to reach to Jupiter's moon Europa uh, sometime in April 2030. When the mission arrives at Jupiter in 2030, one, one of the primary challenges that the spacecraft and the operations team will face is the radiation environment. Due to having a gravitational a field 20,000 times stronger than the one here on Earth, and how fast the planet spins. And those two conditions result in a, a radiation belt that you can picture it more as a constant uh, space weather, that it's always there. So for that reason, it's not optimal to perform a normal orbital mission into Jupiter and Europa as a, our equipment wouldn't be able to last due to the radiation. So for that reason, Early on during phase A, the multiple flyby mission concept was selected, where we are just swinging through the Europa moon, performing those close approaches. And during those close approaches is where all of our nine instruments, plus the gravity radio investigation science, will be able to take measurements, do what they do, do the science, and collect all that data. There are nine science instruments plus a gravity radio science investigation. Within that spectrum or suite of scientific instruments, they're primarily broken down into uh, two types. We have the remote sensing type and we have the in situ type. The, the remote sensing instruments, will be, what, what they will do is that during those close flyby approaches, they, they will be pointing down to the surface of the moon in order to uh, take measurements. In the other hand, the in situ type instruments, they will be collecting uh, data and analyzing uh, samples that will be lofted from the surface of Europa's icy crust. Once the science data is collected, we're gonna be using our telecommunication systems to send the data back uh, via our high gain antenna. Once science data arrives back to Earth, our science team uh, will uh, review the data and we'll perform the respective uh, evaluations in order to understand more about uh, the conditions of Europe. This mission uh, is important because it, it's given us the, the possibility or the opportunity to explore another celestial object within our solar system, which is more or less within reasonable reach time to understand if there are any other conditions or if there's conditions at all and suitable for life. I believe that everybody, when when we were kids, we we did wonder what's beyond, what's out there. Our ancestors did it. We do it every single day. If there's life out there or something else out there, and that has always been kind of like the big question mark. Maybe the child within me wants to believe that we are not alone, but at the same time. Who knows, right? I mean, the big question has always been what's outside our beautiful blue marble? Even though the mission really form formulated 
officially somewhere around 2010, there are many people who are sort of associated directly or indirectly, even much more longer. For example, with Voyager and Galileo, when we received the data, there were a lot of people who were back then in their, you know, graduation or doing their PhDs. They have started sort of analyzing the images are actually now in the leading role within the mission. And so this is not something like we are looking at maybe a five years or 10 years of work. It's actually a lifelong legacy for many people who started as an early career and now leading this mission and pushing the boundaries. We do not know what's gonna happen, but we are still doing it because we have that engine pushing us to keep moving forward. I do believe that the child within me has uh, taken me through many challenges, many endeavors, many uh, adventures that uh, at the end of the day has pushed me to, to work in exciting missions. Missions like the Europa Clipper mission that it's just trying to make history.